Wow, it's really great to meet you. I'm I'm really excited to um, make this uh, connection with you, and to hear your your fabulous story about what happened with you uh, using cannabidiol. That's magnificent. I know. It's just it's it's been really remarkable for me. I, I haven't you can't explain. Well, I can explain it, but yeah, it's just been wonderful. Great. Um, and you haven't been using it that long either. Four months. How did you hear about cannabidiol? Um, I, um, I started searching for something uh, online, something natural, because um, I was stuff, suffering really bad headaches and migraines from, um, I had osteo, I've got osteoarthritis in my neck and um, my nerves are being uh, damaged down the right side of my body, so they've been giving me headaches. And I was going to the doctor and he was giving me Endone and Valium and uh, Lyrica and I was feeling really hazy all the time. I didn't feel well at all. And I'm a PT and I can't afford to be like that. So I started having a look around online and all of a sudden I seen CBD, I seen cannabis and, and my ears pricked up because many, many years ago, as I said, I've got lots of addictions going on many years ago, but I also smoked pot, you know, when I was a kid. So my ears pricked up and I just thought, I've got to know a little bit more about that. Um, so I went in and I had a look around and, and I ended up hooking up with a, a company um, that no longer shipped to Australia, but that was the first oil that I started off on. And um, I noticed that my anxiety had alleviated within about, it must have been about 10, 12 days of taking that first oil. And, um, and then they stopped shipping to Australia and then I started having a look around and I found a couple of places within Australia and I tried their oil and it didn't really sort of cut it as much. So then I started having a big, big bit of a wider look around the world and I found this company in the States that um, uh, are now shipping to Australia. So, yeah. Well, that's fabulous. And uh, you said uh, your anxiety was decreased and you avoided using other medications that were being offered by the clinicians. That's really that's a really interesting switch for me as well, Doc, and I wanted to talk to you more about that. But I've had the opportunity to continue getting Endone, continue getting Lyrica, continue getting Valium, and I have, you know, I have opiate addictions in my past, in my 20s and my 30s. I, I was addicted to heroin and methadone and benzos um, and speed and coke, and I did the whole trip. So... <clears throat> A big switch for me, I mean, even though I could get these narcotics now, I didn't want to. I had no desire to whatsoever, even though it's been like 20 years since I've done that sort of thing. But still, I thought I didn't, I had no desire whatsoever to be as brain fogged as I, possi as I possibly could to get rid of the pain. Yeah, you were already That's getting brain fog from the standard pharmaceuticals. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So I, I and I just, I, I can't help but seem to contribute it to, to CBD. I don't know whether that has, it has, it is a turning point that that's the CBD has helped with that decision. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yes. I you know, and that's been my experience. And I've got quotes from uh, former heroin users saying exactly the same thing, that all of the cravings for uh, the addictions and for using heroin just goes away. It just evaporates. And there's some good science behind that, that it, it changes the way the body works, uh, it, whether it's a, in the, the amygdala or uh, some of the hypothalamus, that, that really regulates um, the uh, portions of the addictive habit, which is a, a place format where you are in a place or in a situation and that memory triggers a, um, a biochemical reaction that causes you to crave for that substance again. So it all fits in there, and cannabidiol has actually been, actually been shown in animal models to extinguish that particular pathway and other pathways as well. That's it's so interesting. And once I, I actually came across, that's how I came across you. I started having a look around because I had a I had a, a lady come to me, somebody that I know that is at the, in the minute going through. She's in sobriety with alcohol alcoholism. And she said that she was interested in CBD because she's suffering from seizures, but she wants to be careful because she doesn't want to damage her sobriety. So then I started having a look around on YouTube trying to find something about CBD and addictions, and I came across your YouTube. Um, and that's how I initially um, got woken up to you, you know. So I actually sent her that, that, that um, YouTube clip. And, um, yes, I just find it really, really interesting. It's amazing. Well, I applaud you for digging that out and for trusting me in what I have to say because there's thousands of stories being told on the internet and I feel very fortunate that you chose me. 
Yeah, no, well, you, you, and, then, and then what I did is I downloaded your PDF all about the CBD as well, and I've been trying to read that as much as I can. <laughs> yeah, so just trying to get as much information as I can because, uh, you know, there's a massive NA movement over here um, and, and AA as well, but I don't think any of them are attuned with CBD. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know, but I would be really interested to be able to help that sort of situation, but I don't know how they're going to look at it whether they're going to be thinking, is it something you're just going to be um, uh, swapping um, for something they're taking? But then it's a plant medicine, you know, it's a, it's a, and it's such a healing, a healing thing. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, the, most of the legislatures and the medical physicians, they don't really understand about cannabidiol. They think of it all as marijuana and THC, uh, and they're caught up into the culture that goes back 70 years. Uh, they've the been- they have um, picked up on the propaganda that was produced and they've really fell right into it so that, that it's very difficult to change their culture and their belief system uh, to without um, confirmed studies. And of course, in the U.S., there's been uh, any studies, any intensive investigations with humans has pretty well been restricted and barred. So we don't have a lot of literature in the U.S. or on human studies, but we've got literally almost 8,000 articles about uh, cannabinoids, uh, the endocannabinoid system, and we've got uh, over 2,000 articles about cannabidiol. And about cannabinoids, there are over 23,000 articles that have been produced. So the information's there. It's whether you choose to engage at and get uh, and try to understand um, mm. some of the mixed messages that are going on. So, I, you know, in terms of what's yeah, no. going on in Australia, I know there's a big effort to legalize uh, cannabis in several forms. In fact, the company that I align myself with, Elixinol, is, uh, has a prime base, is actually in Australia. Um, and it's the Australian version. And it's a global company, and it's providing CBD um, to every uh, um, well, 23 nations and all across the United States and all the territories. So it's widely available. And hence, uh, I was confused about whether you were coming. The message that I got from you was from the UK, South Africa, or whether it's coming from Australia. And delighted to hear you coming from Australia because there's some great moves that are going on in Australia right now to get legalization uh, for the products that are want to be brought in, but also for the growth of hemp and hemp products in Australia. Oh, it's massive. It's massive. It's just got ballistic here. And as I said, there's quite a few people that are uh, involved in it here within Australia. I mean, there's just products coming out everywhere. There's, uh, there's clothes, there's, there's bricks. I saw something the other day where bricks... Um, for the wall, um, yeah, it's, it, and, and beautiful um, fragrances and body washes. And, and clothing. Oh, yeah, clothing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's there's so many crazy. different things that, that it can do. It's a great industry, and it's, a, it's easily a trillion-dollar industry. But I want to get a little bit more focused on the, some of the things that you were experiencing. You were, your anxiety was pretty bad at one point. You were having a great deal of uh, difficulty sleeping. You felt like you had a hole in your stomach, and you're feeling breathless with conversations, and your heart was racing um, and it, with the start of a new day. I mean, those are, it sounds like horrible symptoms that you were having. Was there anything that precipitated that? Uh, look, um, I've lived that way for so long and I've taken for granted that, that that's how I've been. I, I used to struggle just having a new conversation with somebody because my heart would race and I would never sleep well of a night time ever. Um, I've lived that way for so long that I've just taken it for granted, I think. And the last the last couple of years in particular has been particularly bad because I, I, I went away travelling on the on the north coast and I just I didn't know where I was living, I didn't know where I was going to work from, um, and I was meeting new people. So I had a lot of um, a lot of anxiety around everything I did. So it was particular heightened these last couple of years, but thinking of all the time previous to that, I've always lived with a ball of fear in my stomach, always. And I actually mentioned that to somebody the other day and they said, oh, I can't imagine living like that. And I just thought, I don't know how not to live like that. You know, so it was, um, yes, yeah, so I think it's just something that's grown up with me from childhood and then, of course, all my addictions didn't help. How was, how was your childhood? 
Uh, it was very, it was tough. My father died when I was four and then my mother uh, gave me away to foster families uh, for the next um, three years, uh, four years, and then she remarried and got us back, got my sister and I back. And um, I, I think I spent four years at home before I realised that she just wasn't a very nurturing woman um, and I found it very hard and very difficult to have any sort of relationship with her. So my boyfriend came along when I was 14 and I left home and I never, ever went back. So that's a common pattern for people who have PTSD and that type of uh, either abusive situation or um, neglect situation actually shifts the endocannabinoid system in the brain to make you more susceptible to things like PTSD because yeah. PTSD doesn't occur in everybody who experiences a trauma, uh, but um, people with the kind of background that you're describing do have that more. And with PTSD, there certainly is a full spectrum. And I would imagine that you might fit somewhere on that spectrum with on the anxiety state, but uh, you might have a hyper alertness, um, you might have uh, recurrent dreams, um, and the inability to uh, forget about certain experiences. Um, you might also have social anxiety, which you described, um, and um, well, there's several other complexes that occur, but it uh, suffice it to say that it represents a spectrum rather than being, is it this or is it that? It's not clear what that is. And you don't yeah. have to be in the military to have it. Far more women get PTSD than men because of women's sensitivity with respect to their endocannabinoid system. Yeah. Well, it's funny you should say that about heightened, um, heightened, would you say something about heightened environment? Well, I, I feel when I'm in, in different environments, I'm very heightened to people's uh, feelings and uh, to I'm very sensitive to what's going on. I, I can notice that I can read a situation or read an environment very quickly. Um, I just seem over, I don't know whether it's overly sensitive to it or not. I don't know. So since using CBD, have some of those things, uh, you've already said the anxiety has calmed down enormously. Most definitely. I used to, I was overthinking everything, as I said, to rat house proportions. Um, I mean, I still think a lot of, think about a lot about things, but I mean, that's a woman thing, but I don't overthink. I don't stress, stressfully overthink about things anymore. Um, and as far as the environment goes, I think I've done a fair bit of security in the last couple of years as well. And I think I've become heightened to that sort of thing, um, but not so, not so that it's debilitating me. Um, yeah, look, my anxiety, I mean, it's hard to explain, but I just feel this strength, this courage. Um, yeah, it's just like everything just seems to have realigned. Um, I can I hear said, you. I understand what you're saying, and I, I see this quite commonly. There is a, a building strength within yourself to be all that you are, everything that you can be. You feel like you have the fortitude to step forward. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. And it's only these last couple of weeks that my direction has started to move back into my addictions and trying to help people with CBD and addictive behaviour, addictions. Um, it, it's just funny that it started to angle that way back in for me. And I always thought about it, but I never thought I could do it. But now I feel like I'm living proof. And perhaps it's definitely the direction that I should be moving in. Wow, that's really a wonderful story. And there certainly are some challenges in Australia. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, delighted to help. And my experience with addiction has been just what you describe. As you can tell, I can, I can walk through the number of the stages and the steps that people experience. But one of the things that you didn't mention uh, that I tell everybody who is addicted to alcohol, to nicotine, uh, to opioids or benzodiazepines, is um, that it, uh, CBD will take away the cravings for those things and it will stop the uh, addictive withdrawal symptoms. Uh, and that's incredible that you could be able to block those particular pathways and move on to a non-dependency uh, of uh, one of those substances. And yet it seems to work in all of those addictive uh, compounds. Yeah, um, oh, it's just so interesting. As I said, I, I firsthand felt it because I had I had endone at my fingertips. I had Valium, and this was just these in these last couple of months. I was able to use these and trying to alleviate the pain, but I chose not to. Even though, as I said, my addictions were over twenty years ago, but I was still very 
heightened and uh, aware of uh, using those, those type of drugs. So the thought um, occurred to you, you just didn't have any cravings for them. Exactly. That's exactly right. I could feel, I knew what they would do to me, but I didn't want to know about it. I just, the craving was gone. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Um, yeah, just so interesting. Yeah. Really, we're very, very profound. That's, that's fabulous. You know, um, that's great. I'm delighted to talk with you and I appreciate the time that you've, you spent. Uh, and I, let me answer any questions that you might have or try to answer. I don't know everything, but I try to study and learn with each new article that comes out. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I'm not sure what I wanted to achieve by, by talking with you, I guess. Well, I guess just to find out what was going on and to have somebody else backing up the things that were happening to me. Um, and someone to, to verify and validate what was going on for me. Absolutely. Which, uh, you've, you've nailed it right on the head. And you've been very explicit about describing those particular effects uh, that, that you're experiencing, which are right on track with those that I see others experiencing. Yeah. And, where, where, and you're in, are you in Canada or in Vancouver? or no? uh, Washington State. You're in Washington State. So, have you had any? Um, uh, what what uh, what are you doing with addicts, addicts at the moment with CBD? Are you doing anything or? Well, uh, occasionally I will get introduced to an addict, and I will give them a protocol and some guidance as to what to use, how to use it. Uh, make some coaching telephone calls like we're doing now, and talk people through the first steps. Monitor them for the effects, um, and then uh, support them as they go through the additional stages. Uh, I don't have enough time to do that for everybody, but I would love to, I'm, I'd love to work with some addiction groups. Unfortunately, uh, I, I, there's not enough people who believe in what uh, you're saying and what, what I'm experiencing and, and my words to bring it to a clinical environment. I am working with a local mental illness clinic, and I'm hoping that we will do some preliminary work that will open that up to a large large number uh, of visitors uh, for the troop. But they're financially strained, and so we're going to have to look for funding in order to provide that. Yeah. So what would you suggest, or have you got any suggestion of how I, I might go about getting <laughs> getting the word out? Well, it's social media, definitely. Yeah. You can look at that. Um, you can also look at uh, people who are um, uh, promoting the use of CBD in a respectful and honest way. Um, you might look at uh, the company I've been working with. They've been very forthright, uh, Elixinol, E-L-I-X-I-N-O-L, and yeah. see what, what they're offering. I know that there is... Um, they're, they're doing quite a bit of work, administrative work, to bring it to a legalization role. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, your testimonial right here is I'm, I'm going to pass that on to uh, some of the members of the company and, and to Paul Benheim, who is uh, one of the key proponents for and sponsors for uh, legalizing cannabis in Australia. He's a longtime grower um, and he's got almost 22 years of experience growing hemp um, in Australia. So um, he's a strong proponent and uh, hopefully we can take uh, these kind of reports uh, like what you're experiencing and pass these up to the legislatures and the representatives um, in your parliament to, so that they can, oh, well, uh, another constituent is reporting one of those good effects. <clears throat> and I always yeah. like to point out that there just aren't any significant negative effects. Um, besides, you're taking CBD and it doesn't have any psychoactive portion at all. No, I know, I know. Um, I just had a question then and I, it slipped my mind. Oh, I can't think, sorry. <laughs> um, Okay, so um, so um, your company, your company that you work with, um, are they working within Australia? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I might have a look at them. <laughs> yeah, I might have a look at them. Um, and I'm quite happy for you to take this forward and, and, and yeah, sh show whoever you need to. Um, yeah, that would be wonderful. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Great. Um, 
really delighted to to meet you and let me be your resource and answer questions for you <clears throat> and if you want me to speak at some gathering or group or something that you want to do um, okay. then i'm i'm uh, available as a resource for you um, i'll talk with clinicians i will i will consult with individuals perhaps you, you saw some of the information that i do consults uh, for Australia, um, for anywhere in the world, as a matter of fact, and to talk about cannabidiol. And there is a mechanism for getting cannabidiol, the elixinol cannabidiol, into Australia and in other countries, even if they don't have specific allowances for that. Okay. Thank you so much for your testimony and, and your contribution. No, my pleasure. It was lovely meeting you, and I hope to speak to you again soon.